Hey guys, and welcome back to Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair. As always, I'm DemonFire93, and last time we found Ibuki and Hyoko's bodies. And now we have to start the investigation to figure out who murdered them. The mystery is afoot. So let's continue talking to everybody in the in the uh, music venue here and figure some Something things out. like this! It has happened once again. Two of my cherished friends died at the same time. I cannot believe it. How cruel. This is the place where he sang for Fuyuhiko. Hyoko looked like she was having so much fun listening to her music. And now those two are no longer here. Ah, oh, such a tragedy. Could it be Chiaki? Because we had the the hidden cutscene with the, with the camera and everything where uh, Hyoko asked me to come here. You know, it was Ibuki and... Uh, Hyoko and Chiaki, who are all here. So, it's like, we've got these two here who are dead. Would it be Chiaki? But, I hope it's not, because I still got one more charm to get from her. I understand how you feel, but please get a hold of yourself. Two of our friends were killed. That's all the, the more reason why we can't just leave this alone, right? So just as I thought. We must do this, then, for the sake of the two who have fallen. Yeah. Okay, Gundam. <laughs> Even I'm horrified of my power, of the eye of the overlord. What the heck is this? Nature, the you collective will of the world. You stupid fool. I cannot believe you haven't noticed that aberrant thing. Pitifully humans, they refuse to lift their heads up for fear of doubting the authenticity of the blue sky. Lift my head up, does he mean that there's something up there? Where? I don't see anything. What are we talking about? Gundam? Nature. The collective will of the world. What are you talking about? I don't understand what you're talking about. Connie? Hey, you okay? You're still feeling not feeling well? Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't really get it, but when I think about Mechamaro, it's like my knees start shaking. That's weird. There's no way I've got that kind of weakness. It'd probably go away after I, if I battle a strong dude, but Nekomaru's not here. Nekomaru will definitely come back. You, you're right. Nagito? Hajime. This might be impudent of me to ask, but will you listen to what I have to say if I have to? Hey. I heard that you witnessed the incident from the very beginning, right? So what? <laughs> Can you provide me with a summary of the incident? I need to reach the truth behind this incident for the sake of dedicating my body to an even greater hope. No. Well, why? Don't make me repeat myself. No. This guy just wants to confuse us. There's no way I'm going to tell him what he wants us to, wants to know. How unfortunate. I see. That's disappointing. I guess I'll find out at the trial, though, when you give your testimony. Damn right. Hey, Hajime, take a look at this. Hmm? What? Huh? Look what's in front of the door. This is a drumstick, right? And it, it looks like it's broken. What happened to it? Like... If something like this was in front of the door, <laughs> you think it might be a really big clue? Well, why would this be a clue? I mean, it was blocking the door, and that's why we couldn't get in, I guess. Hey! So we had to break it down, and then snap the drumstick in half. Remember when we came to the music venue? If it won't open, the only thing we can do is force our way through. Hmm, I wonder if it's going to be possible. All the four of us, two of us are girls. Doesn't matter if you can do it or not, we have to try. Let's go. Charge. Go. Yes, I remembered. The door was locked when we tried to go inside and the four of us charged into the door. <laughs> but when I examined it, I found out that this door doesn't have a lock at all. Huh? I get it. The door, is, the door is designed to be pushed open, and this is the shape of the handle. If a stick was used to bar the door here, huh. well, don't you think it would lock the door and keep it from opening? You mean, you think this drumstick was used to lock the door? <laughs> the broken drumstick on the floor in front of the door should be proof of that. Then, how was the killer able to get out? Huh? I mean, the music venue doesn't even have windows. This door is the only entrance. If they locked the door from the inside, the killer would wouldn't be able to escape outside. Like, maybe the killer was still inside when we broke down the door to the music venue. 
and they waited until we were already at the scene of the crime to join us? Okay. You know, don't they use tricks like that a lot in m mystery dramas and stuff? <laughs> if that's the case, there might be evidence of that around here somewhere. Damn it. Alright, I'm definitely gonna find it. I won't let the, the killer get away with this easily. Or get away with this. The killer was still inside when you broke down the door to the music venue, huh? Like you said, that might be possible, I've but... I've listened to the whole story. I heard what you two were just were discussing. Chiaki, what, that was kind of cool entrance. Well... Besides the broken drumstick, I've also discovered something interesting. What is it? See? There's a weird glob where the right and left door touch, see? You're right, what is this? It looks too firm to think it's rubber. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't look like rubber, but... As she said that, Chiaki bent down, scraped off the semi-transparent glob with her finger, <laughs> and put it in her mouth? Why are you putting it in your mouth? Hmm. Ah, it smells like workshop chemicals. Workshop? And the, this chewiness. I see. This thing may be a glob now, but that doesn't mean it was a glob from the start. And what was it from the start, Chiaki? For instance, if it was originally a liquid that hardened into this, it might be possible to apply it directly and smoothly in the gaps of the door. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just as I thought, it tastes nasty. Chiaki spat the glob out of her mouth and left the area. Besides that bit about the taste, it's okay to consider this some kind of clue, right? Or some kind of glue. Semi-transparent glob has been added to the truth bolt section of your handbook. I mean, that's what it sounds like anyways. Okay, is there anything else for me to look at around here? Nope. Okay, then. Let's go to the storage room. There's a door that says staff only. It looks like inside is the storage room. I might as well investigate in here, too. Duh. Oh, hey, Nagito. There's carpeting, wallpaper, and prints on the shelf. It's probably used for storage decorations. Huh? This thick black paper that's folded up in the lower shelf, it looks like wallpaper. There's a lot of stickers po pasted all over the front of this wallpaper. Well, front side is wallpaper. And this edge of the wallpaper it looks like it's torn, but what does this mean? Stickers? There's a lot of stickers with the venue's logo placed here. It's like they made a bunch of them and had too many left over. It feels somewhat depressing, huh? Compared to last time, it feels like there are less stickers than before. Am I overthinking this? Okay. Yeah. With a mirror this big, it'd be easy to check your... Okay. Nagito, did you come here to investigate the storage room too? <laughs> I just wanted to confirm what you were thinking. Is that it? Or is he trying to stand guard here? Hey. So how about it? Did you find any clues? The tipped over step ladder on the stage. The duct tape binding Hyoko. That probably all came from this storage room. There might be other things from this storage room that they use for the crime. You always pretend to give me hints, but in the end, you're just going to be on the killer's side, right? <laughs> oh, I'm not siding with the killer, you know. I'm just on the side of whoever acts in the name of hope. That's all there is to it. Right. That's the main reason why this case is really special. Huh? Man. But I can't say for certain, though. But maybe Righty will. What do you think, Righty? No, I don't think that, that... I don't think that's right. What is this guy saying? As usual, he's not making any sense. Hajime. By the way, Hajime, I still don't quite understand the details of what happened. Right? Hey, if you could explain it to me in detail, I think I'd be able to give you some more useful information. Really? You might end up confusing us again instead. You don't want to find the truth, you just want to make us suffer. Oh, me? That's not true. I'm doing this because I believe it's for everyone's sake. Even my hand. Oh, well. For the sake of everyone's hope, I'd gladly become the enemy, and I won't even mind when I die. Hey, you know, if I become the enemy, maybe we can chop off my right hand, put a hook on there, and I can be Captain Hook. And you can be Peter Pan! Yeah! Damn it. That's the main reason why now, or re main reason why, I can't overlook this case this time. Uh, as long as I have my left hand. Huh? What does that mean? <laughs> Regardless, I guess you're not going to tell me, huh? Then it can't be helped. I guess I'll just rely on my gut feelings. Gut feelings? Hey. 
You should come by later too. I'll go there first and see and wait for you. Where exactly are you talking about? <laughs> well, obviously the movie theater. After he said that, Nagito walked out of the, my sight. Movie theater? Why the sudden interest in the movie theater? Because that's where the hemp bag came from. I guess that's everything important in the storage room. I guess I should go back to the music venue. I mean, the, the step ladder. There's two. There were two step ladders. Why are there two step ladders missing? No, wait. No, wait, there's a. That. Never mind. I was gonna say maybe they there is a step ladder behind me, but I think they just forgot how to make reflections work. Okay then. I think that's everything here. All right, with this we might be close to finished. Uh, be close to finish investigating the music venue, but I still need to talk to Mikan. I need to make sure I get those autopsy results from her. Okay. How about it, Mikan? Have you found it out anything by now? Uh, to tell you the truth, it's been very inconclusive. You got it wrong, but it's not my fault. This music venue is just too hot. Because of because of the heat, I can't estimate the time of death. Because of the heat? Is that possible? <laughs> if a body is overexposed to heat or cold, he won't be able to determine a precise time of death. I see. That might have been the killer's goal. They cover up their time of death by using the heater to make the inside of the music venue hot, but also to make the glue on the door melt. Maybe. But that's weird. But even if this heat is the killer's doing, is there anything, any reason for them to cover up the time of death? I agree. As long as I saw it, it should be clear what order the murders occurred, except for you didn't see Hyoko's murder. First was Ibuki, then Hyoko. I don't buy that. And as long as this is an animation, Im imitation murder, there shouldn't be any mistake in the order of the murders. Huh? Imitation murder? Huh? Huh? You don't know, Hajime? I thought everyone already knew. See? It's a murder where the killer uses a creative work, like a song or a film, as an outline for their killings. It's so common in detective novels, mangas, and video games that you start to get annoyed by it. How would an imitation murder be related to this murder? <laughs> well, based on the killing order and that, the way they were killed, it's clearly an imitation of that movie. That movie? Good instincts. The assumption is an imitation murder is the reason why the killer killed two people. Mm. The goal was an imitation killer. Even so, why did they feel the need to do something like that? Do you have a minute? Excuse me, if this was really an imitation of that movie, then is it possible that one more person might have been killed? This, too, must be the will of causality. It's certainly conceivable if the killer wishes to complete the imitation. Hold on a sec. What are you all talking about? An imitation murder? One more person might have been killed? <laughs> are you guys worried that there's going to be another victim? Then no worries. Ah, here comes the point of the game where they say, well, you can't have more than two people murdered at a time. Just like they did in the first game. Things are getting out of hand too fast if a bunch of people could be killed at once. I'm a real cautious fella, so I prepared a perfect countermeasure. Mm. Ahem, on this schooling killing school trip, the same blacken can only kill a maximum of two people. Huh? You mean you've added another rule? Yep. Well, if killing everyone at once is okay, the blacken would be able to secure an easy victory, right? As long as they're psychotic enough. <laughs> this new rule will prevent that. Make sure you slam it into your tiny brains. Um, if it is a maximum of two people, then there will not be any more killings. Um, since you're here anyway, can I ask you one more thing? You know, I just want to confirm one of the class trial rules. Uh, I see, I see. As expected of you, you are very strict about games. Perhaps. I don't want to consider this possibility at all, and I don't even want to think someone would do this. If two cases occur at once, what happens if there are two killers? Huh? So... Like I said, I'm talking about the possibility that Ibuki and Hyoko were 
killed by two different people. That would mean that two killers exist at the same time, but we can only vote for one person, right? I am concerned. If we can only choose one based on a majority vote, the other people could simply achieve victory. Yep. Yeah, you're right! See? So what happens in that case? What about a case where there's three incidents instead of two? Or the four incidents overlap one another? Silence! Shut up! It's okay, I'll make it extra sure. Something like that never happens! Hey. Meaning, two killers can't exist at the same time, right? So, if it's safe to say that applies to this case too, right? Wow! Huh? I don't like this! Alright, fine, fine. That's right, there's always one killer at any given time. Even if they had an accomplice, I'd have you figure out who the mastermind is. The one who swung the blade. The one who... Uh... Swung the bat, I guess, in Becco's case. Man, I ended up giving you a huge hint. She made me say it. Gamer brains are not to be underestimated. I should just shut up and go back to my cave. I see. So there's no possibility for two killers two killers to exist at the same time. With this, I guess that narrows things down a little. Yep. Yep. That makes things a little easier. Fine. Plus, if the same killer can kill a maximum of two people... Space your powerlessness! It means a third victim would be impossible! Imitation murder breakthrough! You guys keep saying that, that and it sounds strange to me. What do you guys mean by imitation? Um, could it be you haven't seen it? Seen it? Seriously, seen what? Monokuma's movie, come on, Hajime! So... Like I said, that movie... Oh my! When we first explored this island, Monokuma was passing out invitation tickets. Then the imitation is... Good instinct. Of course, it's an imitation of that movie. Well? But based on the murders this time, it closely resembles that movie, as if they were copying it. As if they copied the movie? I see, Nagito mentioned something about that. Then it can't be helped. I guess I'll just rely on my gut feelings. Gut feelings? You should come by later, too. I'll go there first and wait for you. Where exactly are you talking about? Well, obviously, the movie theater. You... I see. So you haven't seen it. Still, it's not too late, I think. It's probably a good idea if you watch that movie before the class trial starts. Looks like I need to do that. Um, then I should get going, too. There are other places I want to investigate. Um... Where did you intend to go next, Yaki? Hmm. Probably the hospital, for sure. The first victim, Ibuki, was there. I don't know what was going on at the hospital in the first place. You are right. Thanks to the despair disease, we could not go there for some time. She's right. It might be good for me to investigate the hospital, too. There might be some clues related to Ibuki's death. For clues related to, related to Hyoko's death, I should try going over to the motel. There's still a lot of things I can do before the class trial. I'll definitely give it my all until the end. Okay, then. Gonna leave here. Bye. Raggin' friggin'. Alright. Let's go. Wait, hold it. It's been a little while. How's my pet doing? 225 steps. Alright. So, to the motel. Oh, hey guys. I just remembered, I never went inside any of the rooms in the motel. Yeah! Plus, I don't even know where Hyoko's room is. It might be faster to just ask someone. Hey, Fuyuhiko, you've been at the hospital with me the entire time, right? Would you know which one of these rooms is Hyoko's? Damn right. Hey, Hajime, can you explain it to me again? What happened when you first discovered Ibuki's body? It was the same as when I found it with you guys. Ibuki's body was hanging from the baton lighting. However, there was no body discovery announcement made. That's why I went to get you guys. I met up with Chiaki at this motel, and when we were about to go back to the music venue, okay. you met up with Mikan and me. And when we went back to the music venue, the entrance door wouldn't open for some reason. I see. So we had no choice but to break down the door and discover Hyoko's body was suddenly there too. Yeah, that's what happened. Hey! 
This is the most important part. When you arrived at the motel, who else saw you besides Chiaki? Um, as I recall, Gundam. <sighs> Didn't you hear me? A body was found. B -b -b body Could it be? Do you intend to spread lies like Nagito in order to confuse us all? Besides Chiaki, I also saw Gundam and Monami. I see. So Kazuichi and Sonya didn't appear, huh? Do you think those two are suspicious? Like... Well, Hyoko... Hyoko... You know, well, Hyoko was killed. Between the time you saw Ibuki's body and when we broke down the door, right? So obviously those two are the most suspicious since they weren't with us. That... That might be it, but... I... While we're at it, let me tell you my alibi, too. When the morning Monokuma announcement woke me up, I went straight to the hospital. I saw Mikan panicking in front of the hospital. I asked her what's going on. She said a boogie disappeared. So you guys split up and looked for a boogie, huh? Well, yeah. Well, we, while we were circling the island, we came to the motel and saw you guys there. Did you see anyone else while you circled the island? Well, no. We went to the movie theater and that street full of machines to look for a boogie, but we didn't see anyone. <laughs> Are you implying I don't have an alibi because I didn't run into anyone? It's unreasonable for you to doubt me. The time that Mikan and I were on our own looking for a boogie wasn't very long. <laughs> In that short time, there's no way I could have killed a Hyoko and wrapped her around the pillar with duct tape. It's true. I feel like there wasn't enough time to do that after I left the music venue. But the fact is Hyoko was killed and we did discover her body. Huh? What? You still doubt me? Jeez. Well, I'm used to it. It's true, I've done things that I deserve to be doubted for. <laughs> so don't worry. Even if you doubt me, I don't plan on dismembering you and encasing you in concrete. I'd want to know in advance what I'd have to do to end up like that. Fihiko's account has been added to the truth bolt section of your handbook. Gundam! So you have appeared. You're here, right? Come on out. Huh? Are you talking to me? I can see you. Did you really think you could hide your presence like that? I wasn't trying to hide it. Hide in the first place. Hey, which room was Kyoko in staying in? Listen well. Open the door to the center room. <laughs> However, are you prepared? Make sure you pray to whatever god you hold dear, and you might want to bring an extra pair of underwear. <laughs> I wonder, how does this guy talk to his parents and teachers? Okay. Hyoko's room. Looks like it's locked, but the key was inside her kimono. Maybe if I use this... It opened, just as I thought. This key was Hyoko's room key. Alright, I should go inside. So Hyoko is staying here. She only stayed here a few nights, so it doesn't really feel like her room, but I feel a little conflicted. Oh, oh hey, Sonya. Huh? Did the door open? Yeah, Hyoko put the key in her kimono, so I used that to open it. Um, I see. What? Did something happen? No, it's just I'm starting to believe it might be my fault. Her fault? What does she mean? Hello, Monokuma. I found you! No! Be very, very quiet. I found all of the Chapter 3 Monokumas. What do you mean, Sonya? Um, the moment Hyoko came to this motel, she completely shut herself in this room. She was afraid of the despair disease, so she was cautious of you guys too, right? However, her fear of the disease was not the only reason she locked herself in here. She had another reason. Besides that disease, what other reason would make her lock herself in her room? Perhaps. Her kimono. Her kimono? Um, uh, yesterday, I went to go talk to her. Since she had been in her room for some time, I told her it might be good for her to go outside for a bit. She kept the door to her room locked, but by coincidence, it was not locked at that time. And then, I saw it. Hyoko was crying and struggling with her kimono sash. She did not want to smell bad, so she took a shower, but then she could not tie her sash anymore. Mahiru is no longer with us, so I believe she was having trouble with it. 
she didn't leave her room because she couldn't tie her kimono, huh? You are right. The others might have thought it was just a silly sash, but it must have been a serious issue for her. Uh... Hyoko told me that she learned how to tie her sash from Mahiru. That Mahiru kindly taught her the basics. That's why she wanted to be able to tie her sash on her own. Perhaps. She probably could not forgive herself for not being able to do it, especially since Mahiru taught her. I... I could not really understand her feelings, and s which is why I said what I did. What did you say? Yoko, by chance, are you having trouble wearing your kimono? Stupid! What are you saying? Of course I can do it! Uh-huh. Because Mahiru taught me. That's why I can do it on my own. Right. Uh, um, if that is the case, how about you do it someplace where there is a mirror? Do you remember the full-length mirror <sighs> in the storage room at the music venue? Okay, so yes, yeah, so whoever the killer is had planned to kill Ibuki, didn't expect Hiyoko to show up at the music venue, and so had to kill her too. If you do it while standing in front of a large mirror, I am confident you will be successful. Also, shutting yourself in your room like this may be bad for your health. Uh-huh. Um... Do you know what would be, condu would be conducive to your health, Hyoko? Getting your throat slit by going to the music venue. God, we all wish that would happen. Oh, look, it did. Hooray! And that was when she kicked me out. It cannot be. Could it be Hyoko remembered that? Are you saying she went to the music venue to wear her kimono? I can see that happening. Hyoko locked her room and made sure she put the room key inside her kimono. I can't imagine that she was abducted by someone. If so, that's weird. Hey, did you tell anyone about this before the incident, or was someone listening in on your conversation? Um, I never told this to anyone, and I do not believe anyone was listening in on our conversation. Nobody knew. If that's the case, how did the killer know Hyoko was going to be in the music venue? Something's wrong. Sonya's account has been added to the truth poll section of your handbook. Okay, is there anything else here? Everything! There's a mirror, but it's too small and rusty. There's no way anyone can use this. I don't see anything else that looks suspicious. There's no sign that someone made a mess of her room, and I don't think she was forcibly abducted. I feel like I couldn't really find any important clue. Oh well, i check the bed. The bed isn't messed up. It doesn't look like she was abducted in her sleep. Okay then. Wait, these rooms got fridges? What? Leave here. Yes. Alright. So then our next point of adventure, exploration, would be the movie theater, yeah? Ah, oh, shit. She needs to gotta deal with Nagito again. Alright, let's head on into the music movie theater and see what, uh, what, what Nagito's gotta say. Hello there. Why, hello there, Hajime. I knew you'd come here. That means you noticed it too, right? And the case this time is an imitation case in which the killer used the movie as their theme. I wouldn't know. I haven't watched that movie yet. I see. I see, then you really should watch this movie first. Hey! Manager of customers here! I came here because the hemp bag was missing from here. I could see it on the counter. There used to be a hemp bag there, but somebody won the prize. Did you call me? Yes, did you call me? Wah wah? Huh? Hajime is the customer. Do you have a problem with that? What are you gonna do? <laughs> and you said you didn't want to watch it. But I knew you wanted to see it all along. If that was Sundere Hajime, if that's what Sundere Hajime looks like, then you're really a tough guy. <laughs> you are so devoted to being Sundere, you even bought the Monokuma sticker for 1.5 million dollars. Huh? You paid 1.5 million dollars for a sticker? Wow, 
I didn't know you had so much money. It's nothing. Listen up! Damn! That's nothing to you? Hey, Hajime, could I borrow, like, a, a trillion dollars then? I gotta, uh, you know, get, get, get some, get some stuff done to my hand. Make it a little, uh, softer. And, uh... Oh, we're not gonna get into it, but, uh, I've, I've kinda made things awkward now, so I think we're gonna end the episode here. Okay, Nagito, shut up and we'll end the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys, shut up, Nagito!